One man who knows all about those threats is Kurt Lippold. He was the commander of the USS Cole the day it was hit by suicide bombers in the year 2000. Commander, thanks so much for coming back on the show. The last time you were here, you warned about the role Iran was playing. We are now seeing evidence of that today. What do you make of these uh, reports from the IDF that Hamas was training um, in Iran in September? Well, good evening, Elizabeth, and thank you for having me back on. I think what we are seeing is what the United States and Israel have known for years, is that Iran has been directly complicit in funding, training, financing, arming, and allowing these groups to plan and conduct terrorist operations throughout the region, if not the world. As we go through and learn more, we are going to see that Iran is directly involved. In some ways, the Biden administration, and I know John Kirby has danced on this and has said we can't find direct evidence, the direct evidence is there. What we need to do is let the American people know just how much Iran was involved in the slaughter by Hamas of Israeli citizens and Americans as well because we cannot let this go unanswered. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal actually goes into great detail on this, that the Al-Quds Force trained 500 Hamas terrorists um, using these paragliders and motorcycles to carry out attacks. And yet, American intelligence says that Iran was surprised by the attack. How could both things be true? Well, it's very clear that Iran was not surprised. They knew it was going to happen at some point. They may not have known the exact hour and day and left that up to the Hamas leadership that, oh, by the way, is safely ensconced at the uh, Four Seasons Hotel in Doha, Qatar. But by the same token, they knew it was going to happen. Not a matter of if, but when. Iran has known for quite some time. And what you're seeing right now, and you mentioned it in your, in your starting monologue, was the fact that information warfare is now playing a more critical role than ever in how Hamas is shaping the PR battlefield that we are seeing play out as Israel delays their invasion and goes after specific Hamas targets to make sure that fewer Israeli IDF forces' lives are put at risk when they do invade. Yeah, we, that's, we see the Israeli government trying to fight back against that this week. They are organizing uh, showings in an auditorium. They're bringing reporters in to watch the body cam videos and cell phone videos that Hamas uh, terrorists took of themselves committing these atrocities. It's a clear effort for, uh, by the Israeli government to remind the world, hey, this happened. Absolutely. And I think this is kind of this is kind of precedent setting for the IDF. The Israeli Defense Forces have never really opened up and never really appreciated. They they've kind of taken this high handed attitude that, hey, we know what the facts are. If we tell the world, they're just going to believe it and they're not going to believe the terrorists. And clearly they're learning a very hard lesson, especially with the purported attack on the hospital that sadly even some Americans, despite the facts, even some of our elected leaders today will not grasp those facts and put it out to their constituents. The fact that they are winning that information war to a point and that we are now playing catch up and beginning to gain ground on them is good news, both for the American citizenry who need to know the actual facts of what went on during that brutal October 7th attack, but more importantly, our regional allies who are now beginning to understand and see that, in fact, what was done by Iran continues a pattern of destabilizing terrorist activities in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, and against Israel. There are also reports in The Wall Street Journal today that Israel is delaying its ground invasion until early next week to allow the U.S. military to get air defenses in place to protect American troops in the Middle East. There are a lot of countries uh, in the Middle East in which American troops are currently stationed. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu said today that Israel alone will decide when to go in. Does it make sense to you for the U.S. to make such a request? There have already been 13 attacks on American bases already. Elizabeth, I actually think that, you know, I was like a lot, of, a lot of Americans, it was go in and go in sooner. But when you take a look at what may be at risk in the fact that this conflict could, in fact, expand to a multi-front war with Hezbollah from the north, other Quds forces coming in from Jordan, it makes sense for the United States to not just get the air defense systems into place. But let's make sure that we have the Gerald Ford ready to go. Let's make sure we have the Eisenhower battle group. Let it transit and park right off the coast of Iran to send a signal to them. In addition, 
There is now word beginning to filter out that the Carl Vinson battle group has left the West Coast. I think they initially may show up in the South China Sea to send a signal to China that we're willing to deploy forces as necessary for them not to move to Taiwan. But let's get a third carrier battle group into the region. That gives us an unprecedented level of firepower in addition to the air defense systems. And let's make sure that the Air Force is also getting their assets to deploy to the region right. because we have to be ready for what might happen. Not what will happen, but we want, don't want to get caught flat-footed like Israel did. And if Iran chooses to make this a larger conflict, we want to ensure that we can save American lives as well as Israeli lives. And thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.